Today we're going to find out what happens when you don't have hardware to test on for Goliath, and really just in general for Embedded. So we're talking about virtual tools here today, and specifically we're going to be talking about QEMU, or QEMU, not sure how people are pronouncing this, QEMU, which is basically an emulator. So you can emulate your embedded devices, specifically you can emulate Cortex-M devices, which is a lot of embedded devices that are out there these days. That's not, obviously not inc all inclusive. There are other platforms that it also targets. I think it does Intel and maybe RISC-V as well. But basically it is a platform that allows you to go and emulate actual register sets. And so you're when you're targeting things in Zephyr, you're targeting what looks like hardware to Zephyr. So let's take a look at this. We have some new docs out here. So that we go to guides. This is from docs.goliath.io. This is a temporary version. So uh, this is refactored a little bit here, but basically if you haven't used Goliath before, you definitely want to go through this quick start. This is also the part one getting started video. Basically we're going to go and install the Goliath CTL, make devices on the network, and then actually talk to them quickly just to make sure that you actually have a device and a way to set up a uh, way to set up a PSK ID and PSK, which is the way that we validate, we currently validate devices on the network. Once we do that, we're going to go to Virtual Device Quick Start, which is over here. We're going to go into the introduction. Uh, and same thing here, it shows that you do have to do the platform quick start in order to actually move forward with it. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to go and install QMU, and then we're going to uh, actually go and build for it. What I'm going to show you here, I'm not going to show you all the install stuff. Uh, it is a little bit different depending on which you're on here. Windows, uh, we're not supporting yet, but we will. I'm currently on Linux. I'm on a Ubuntu virtual machine, as I have been showing you for other videos on this channel. Uh, if you do want Windows, please let us know. We'll try and push that forward. But for right now, what we're doing is we're going to, we're going to go and do an install of QMU. And then there's a couple other libraries in here. What we really need to be doing uh, overall is that we not only need to have QMU, but really the networking layer is what's important here. So basically we have this emulated device, but then how is it going out and actually talking to the network? And so some of the other tools that we're gonna be showing here, uh, like Netcat and, uh, I forget the other one, but basically they're, uh, they're these simulated network interfaces so that your virtual device that's living on your machine that looks like a Cortex M3, as we're going to show here, can then talk through what looks like a virtual interface to the internet uh, and uh, then actually pass packets back. So uh, this is also similar. There's also some directions over on the Zephyr page. That's where this, are, this is derived from. And there are links on the document site that we're showing you here that will take you over there. So once you've got all this stuff in and up and going, uh, if you have any problems, of course, you can join our Discord. If you're not a member of the beta, you will not be able to get access yet, but hopefully we'll be opening that up soon. Uh, but if you have any problems with this, please let us know. You do have to run make here, so if, that's, uh, if people need help with that, please let us know as well. And when you're actually running it now, so we're going to go into simulating devices with QMU. Uh, first thing we want to do is actually check to make sure that we're using the right tool chain. This is some new directions in here because I actually ran into a situation where I was, had been running some ESP32 demo and I had the wrong tool chain selected. And so this is actually something you can switch between. So for ESP32, you need to run the Espressive tool chain. For everything else, you're going to be using Zephyr. And this is for Linux specifically, there's individual tool chains if you're running. So if you're running Mac or Windows, basically you need to use the GNU ARM embedded tool chain and then select that. But we're going to be showing you on Linux here. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, switch to my terminal window here. And I'm going to run this command. And what this is doing is basically saying, hey, export is the command that basically allows you to set some environmental variables. Windows and Mac users will be used to that as well. But uh, so we can look at all of them if we get rid of the grep statement here. So this is all of them. And then if we use the grep statement, like we showed, oops, yeah, p grep, and then zephyr. And what we see now is it basically only searches for the Zephyr ones. And so in this case, basically, it's showing that the toolchain variant we're using is Zephyr because this is the Zephyr SDK. And what that really means is that there is a, uh, a large package of different installers and uh, tools that are in the Zephyr SDK, which include things like GNU ARM embedded, also Intel, there's a Neos thing, basically all of the different tools that get all packaged up that you can install on your uh, on your Linux machine. 
So uh, we are we do have the correct one selected, uh, and we're gonna go try and use it. This I think is the right. That actually might be the wrong directory. Let's see where that installed. Let's see if we do opt Zephyr SDK. It does not appear to be there. Hmm, interesting. All right, well, we'll, we'll see if this works. <laughs> and so let's go and follow the rest of the directions here. So this that might be something we go back to. What I expect it to be is more like this, because this is actually where my SDK is installed. It's actually installed in my home directory, which is right here. So you see Zephyr SDK 0.12.4. So that is basically what I'm saying here is we might want to do that and actually set that. Let's actually just go ahead and do that. So we're going to do that. I say 0.12.4. And then if I run this command again, we should see that it is updated to be pointing to the Zephyr SDK that's in my home directory. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger too. There we go. All right, so what we're doing now is that basically now we wanna go and we want to, uh, we need to go and do what we've done in other demos, right? We need to actually add the PSK ID and the PSK itself to the demos that are inside of this uh, Goliath setup here. <clears throat> So I guess another step that is implied in here that it might not already be true is that you do need Zephyr on, uh, sorry, the uh, Goliath version of Zephyr on your machine. And so we have that here. Uh, so if we look here, I'm going to go into Zephyr normal. I, you see, I maintain two different Zephyr instances, Zephyr normal and Zephyr NRF. NRF is for the NRF 91 because the NRF connect SDK is a separate, basically there's a bunch of different impl uh, installs and tools that are in there that we do not need for everything else. So we're going to use Zephyr normal. Normal. Great. And then within here, this is going to be CD modules, lib, Goliath. And then within here, now we have what should look familiar if you've seen some of the other demo videos. So uh, we're going to run just the standard samples. Hello. So if we do, uh, we're going to say nano samples hello proj.conf and here at the bottom you see my super secret uh, so these are my specific PSK ID and PSK and so this allows me to validate onto the Goliath network using PSK ID and PSK please don't use this if this is if you're out there <laughs> and what we're gonna do is basically that is gonna be get built into our uh, Cortex M3 emulated example and then we'll be able to uh, so basically, that emulated device, when it starts sending packets to the Goliath network, now it, now uh, the Goliath network will say, "Hey, I know what this device is. It is, you know, it's Chris's device. He's already given it a PSK ID and a PSK. So now we'll be accepting packets from that device when they get passed through to the Goliath network. Great, but it's coming from a simulated device, which is pretty cool. It's kind of different here. Okay, so we're gonna go and build for this this uh, this emulated device." Let's go and do that. I'm going to X out of this. Please use your own credentials there. Do not use my credentials. Uh, okay, so we're going to do, I'm going to just insert here. So West build and then B. So now this is setting the board, right? QMU Cortex M3 is the board. And then we're already, so we were just looking at the samples hello. And then the dash P is pristine, meaning wipe out anything that happens to be there already. So we'll see if this builds. does seem like it's going to build and that's because I believe because we set the SDK properly so it found everything we need to and it is going and building great okay cool uh, while that's building let's go and read the rest of the directions here because the other thing we need to do is we need to follow some of these other directions uh, let's go to the QMU page And the other things we need to do is we need to go and actually uh, start some of the net tools that they're called. Oh boy, that's, that's a little slow here. Uh, but we're going to open some other windows. And uh, so that's where we had to make and build uh, those other tools that were in the first page. Now we want to go actually go and open the uh, secondary terminals and actually have those running in those other terminals. So what that means for us here, so we're going to have these other terminals here. And what we're going to do is we're going to run these commands, right? So in terminal two, right? So in terminal two, type dot slash loop socat dot shell, right? And so that's basically running a script that's going to uh, 
do something. <laughs> and then over here, what we're going to do in terminal three, we're going to do sudo dot loop slip tap dot sh. So basically, these are the networking scripts that are going to emulate a networking interface here. And you see this looks just like if you did an if config in a Linux system, this is what it looks like here. So these are going to actually pass stuff through out to the network. Cool. So now we should have a built, we built up the QMU uh, device here, right? So we actually have a firmware image, right? We're actually going to be running it internally here. And within the build folder, now there is some scripting that allows us to actually run this uh, this device. Let's see if we can get back here. So now what we're going to do is west build dash t run and what we're so within that build directory now we're doing a dash t run and it should actually be running as a device so we'll see if this actually connects now rubber's hitting the road all right so now it's basically looking just like an esp demo looking just like an nrf91 demo and it's actually sending these packets out here and we don't actually see any movement on these other windows, but these other windows are actually what's enabling it to pass data through out to the network. And you might be saying, well, Chris, I don't actually believe you that this is sending anything of substance, which is fair. Uh, so let's actually go over to my console and we'll take, we'll log in there and take a look at the console. We could also do this from the command line, but we're going to take a look at the console. Uh, the Goliath console is where we can go and actually check data. So we've done this once before or a couple times before. I'll have to log in. Maybe not. Boy, this network is going real slow today. This is a virtual machine, so I run virtual machine while I'm also recording screen recording, and I don't think it, I don't think it appreciates that. So this is not normally this slow. Let's go to logs here. It looks like I may be logged in. No, nope, there we go. Okay, so it is asking me to log in here, and I will log in once it lets me. There we go. Nope. So now I'm logged in. By this time, we should have actually seen 17, 18, maybe 19 points of data coming through to the logs here. And just like before, we're going to go to the logs tab. We should see on that same tag, right? I've been using the same PSK ID and PSK for all of these different uh, samples uh, that I've been showing on here. And so it all looks like the same device. But you see here that right now, so this is current 120 in the afternoon. On 7.29, I actually have been sending 19, 18, 17, 16. If I refresh here, I expect that it's going to be 20, 21, 22, whatever. Um, and so this is basically just like we show, we've showed in the past on the command line that we have a Cortex, an emulated Cortex M3 sending out data and we're able to receive it on Goliath. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you here. Uh, as a hardware person, I... I, uh, I was a little confused about this at first. Uh, you know, so an emulated device like this, you might wonder, well, why would I want to do this? But there's a lot of, uh, basically, you can start to write code without actually having hardware in hand. You can start to automate testing. You can start to push data. You can try out the network. You can try out different capabilities of Goliath, of an emulated M3. I believe there's other emulated, probably M4s as well, M7s, I think. And so basically, you can get a lot more done and you can get much faster iteration cycles because you're not actually loading data down to an actual device and hooking in over serial, right? If, so if you're doing things that are at a high level, which a lot of you know, Zephyr code is doing, you can do that without having to actually involve hardware in that iteration cycle. So if you're not doing something that's actually interfacing out over a spy bus, I squared C, whatever, you can actually start to really cut down on the iteration time and trying things out. And from what I'm told, that is very powerful. Like I said, I am, uh, you know, as a hardware person, this was a foreign concept to me, but I could see how this is valuable. So we would love to hear from you. If you think this is useful, if this is something you want to try out, you can do that. If you haven't signed up for the beta already, we are still looking for beta members. You can go and sign up on Goliath.io. If you are a beta member, you want to try this out, we do have a Discord. And so please join that Discord if you haven't already. Uh, and we will hopefully be opening up later this year for more people to try this out. So uh, looking forward to seeing everything you build with Goliath, with Zephyr, on virtual devices. Uh, I may be a, a fan of uh, Atoms, but the bits are pretty cool too. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.